Sports and welcome to another day in the life with me and today we're taking out the brand new Samsung A35 which is a budget phone aiming to be the best bang for your buck to see if it can keep up with me in my day to day activities. The A35 comes with 120Hz refresh rate AMOLED screen, the Exynos 1380 chip from the last year's A54 along with a 5000mAh battery. The main camera has been upgraded to a 50 megapixel shooter along with an 8 megapixel ultra wide and a 5 megapixel macro lens. It's pretty conservative specs but at $369 it is an interesting value proposition. So this video I'm going to be testing out the cameras, the performance, the battery to see how it holds up and whether it's really worth $369. Alright let's get into this day. I usually start the day checking up on social media, replying messages over the night, and checking up on my notes for the day. Instagram and YouTube launched smoothly and content loaded pretty quickly. Jumping between several apps does make the phone lag a little, but overall multitasking is pretty good. It's interesting to note that even though the A35 has a 120Hz refresh rate display, the amount of time it cuts back to 60Hz is quite jarring. Compared to higher end phones with adaptive 120Hz refresh rate displays, the A35 jumps between frame rates at a very noticeable rate. The A35 also comes with 6GB of RAM which seems to be enough for now but it's not the most smoothest experience. So today I'm kind of focusing on getting some content creation done, taking a bit of a break as it's Good Friday and enjoying some time with the fam. It's currently 1248 and our battery percentage is at 88% which is pretty good so far. I decided to take a break from filming to watch a couple of YouTube videos and catch up on my K-drama 2521. Taking a look at the display, the A35 is equipped with a pretty good panel. It's not the brightest or most color accurate, but for most people, the AMOLED combined with 120Hz is more than enough. Even though the bezels are pretty thick, at least they are uniform. So it's currently 221, our battery percentage is at 77%, which is pretty good. Decided to go on a little walk near a bush trail near a house, just to try and get some cool shots with the Samsung A35, see how the camera does in different lighting conditions. So let's see if we can get some pretty cool shots. now 3pm and our battery percentage is sitting at 73% and now I just hit my first real bug, Instagram stories. For whatever reason, it just wouldn't load but after restarting the app, it was back to normal. Taking a look at the design of the Samsung A35, we do have a glass back which is a first but at the same time it's a bit of a fingerprint magnet. It is a little bit heavy as it is quite a big phone but it is quite a good size and I do think that a lot of people are going to really enjoy the bigger larger display. Along with that comes the key island which is something that Samsung has been introducing to a lot of the new A series phones. Alright now I'm going to go and get some view of that. Here's a quick test on the back cameras of the Samsung A35, sitting here at 4K 30fps and to be honest the cameras on the A35 are pretty eh. You can really start to see where the cameras fall off on the A35 as soon as you hit darker environments. They're not really anything special or anything particularly good but they do get the job done and, and the main 50 megapixel camera is pretty good in good lighting. But the other two cameras aren't really the best and to be honest, I can't really see myself using them too much. This is a shot of me using the ultra wide lens. And this is a shot of me using the macro lens. By this price point, I do think the cameras are suitable enough. Okay, so this comes to the end of my day in the life with the Samsung A35. It's currently 725 and I'm just going to go through the battery performance to see how the Samsung A35 has done throughout the day. 
So at 7.25, the battery percentage is at 49%, which I would say is actually really, really good. I've been using the phone pretty consistently throughout the whole day. So taking a look at the battery usage for the day, screen on time was 3 hours and 34 minutes. So with 3 hours and 34 minutes of screen on time and 48% at the end of the day, the Samsung A34 has successfully passed my day in the life. I'm honestly pretty impressed with the battery performance of the Samsung A34, but it's not really surprising as it does come with a 5000mAh battery. So with that kind of capacity, you would expect it to have pretty good results. Having used quite a lot of Instagram, YouTube, Chrome, and Notion, as well as having the always-on display on the whole day, I think the performance on the Samsung A35 was pretty good. Closing the day with my end-of-day thoughts about the Samsung A35, overall, I think that this is a great package. It is a solid all-rounder, but I did notice that throughout the day, the performance seemed to lag more and more. And especially with Instagram and multitasking, I felt that towards 5 p.m. and 6 p.m., the performance was a bit sluggish and things were taking a bit of time to load up. I have a feeling it might have to do with rep optimization, which is something that could be in with software updates. But overall, the cameras, not really that great. There was only one usable, which is the main 50 megapixel camera. Other than that, the display is great. It's a 120Hz AMOLED display. It's not the brightest or the most color accurate. It doesn't have any HDR certification for YouTube and Netflix. It does present colors pretty well, and watching content is pretty good and pretty vivid on the A35. I'm pretty happy with the A35. I think it's a solid recommendation for most people who are looking for a budget phone. So that wraps up this video. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys in the next video.